Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 12th. First up, this one comes from dailymail.co.uk. Next year's plans are for NASA to possibly spend $2 billion to go out in outer space and lasso around a 500 ton asteroid and then pull it into a neutral orbital position so we could use that as a space station. I think according to the diagram in the picture here, they're planning on maybe parking it between the Earth and the Moon so that we can use that as some kind of a platform for experiments. I also think it's a very good idea too because we're going to have to experiment around with moving asteroids if we want to even hope to keep one from hitting the Earth, either asteroids or meteors or anything like that as they come close to the Earth. We're eventually going to need to learn the technology if we are to save ourselves from a possible impact and a pretty bad disaster so it's a good thing to train now while we can with a little bit easier ones they're going to use a Saturn V rocket as part of this capture mechanism and they think within the next 10 years the technology will be there to to do all this so it's not like in our immediate future but I guess if they gear up with it starting next year then by the time um, an asteroid comes close to us or maybe there's a specific asteroid they planned this with I don't think they mentioned one particular asteroid in this um, they have one asteroid called 1999 RQ-36 that they may possibly try on, but uh, I would like them to do this with any type of asteroid or anything like that just to get a, get used to it and be able to do it properly without uh, messing it up and maybe aiming it at Earth, too. That's the other thing, to get the engineering right so we don't make a more dangerous situation. And let's try it on a small scale first before we try anything on a large scale. Next up, there is a... Uh, some of you guys have probably seen those quadcopters and those six rotor little uh, remote control copters that you can control even with a smartphone like an Android or an iPod phone. Well, somebody has come up with an idea of just putting a little rolling cage around them so that it can also be a land type of robot just by varying the thrust on two of the opposing rotors you can have it inside this little cage to where it can still fly but it can also land on the ground and use quite a bit less energy and explore around go over uh, uh, grassy areas, sandy areas, stuff like that. In this video they show it, but it's so neat to see that somebody can come up with just a simple idea and a simple modification to existing technology and make something a lot more useful. Um, you know, there's just uh, no end to ways this can be used in, in other different applications now that can be used as a ground vehicle or an aerial vehicle. I think that's really a cool idea. As usual, links to all this will be down in the description. Next up, what I want to concentrate on though is uh, CES Consumer Electronics Show. If you just type in CES Space 2013, you're going to see all kinds of videos on YouTube. And it's nice because they're covering not just uh, smartphones and uh, uh, TV sets. They're covering all kinds of gadgets at the Consumer Electronics Shows. It's your usual players. It's Revision 3. It's CNET. It's all the different tech technical kind of folks that do reporting are going to be there at CES. Um, probably not quite as dynamic as last year's CES, but they said it's still going to be a pretty good one this year, and it looks good so far. But something with CNET that's kind of interesting. First off, I'll uh, show you something positive. There's a, uh, I'll just give a little bit of this here, but it's a link to a video where they take a GoPro 2 camera in the case and dip it in liquid nitrogen in a tank and then pull it out. And you can hear it's crackling, and I think at the end it probably does pretty much ruin the outer case of it, but the camera keeps on working and uh, seems like the camera inside the case is, is absolutely fine even with being dipped in liquid nitrogen. So any of you people think that maybe it's a camera not capable of meeting the polar bear challenge standards, uh, it seems like it definitely is. It will be interesting to test that with some of the other cameras too, like the new Drift Ghost and maybe some of the other Sony Action camera. Put them to that same test and see uh, what they can. Now that's way above and beyond the call of duty for even uh, cold weather riding, but kind of need to see that. But on another note, um, dealing with CNET too, they're the ones that have the big award ceremony too to where they award all the different categories of gadgets and stuff like that. They had uh, the Hopper, which Dish Network, it's their DVR, their digital video recorder. They had that as one of the top list gadgets too, but it only lasted for one day until CBS, the parent company that owns CNET, actually called them up and ordered them to take them off the list because CBS is planning on, if they haven't already, they're planning on suing the Hopper because it's a DVR and they don't want people skipping commercials and stuff like that. So if you had any thoughts in your mind that even technological journalism is independent, forget it. I mean, when your uh, parent company can call up and tell the journalists you're just not going to report. As a matter of fact, they not only told them that they could not include the 
Dish Network's Hopper as one of the reward categories. They are not allowed to even re report on anything to do with Dish whatsoever. So anything that Dish has coming out, any kind of technology, the CNET reporters aren't even allowed to cover anymore. So I don't blame the CNET reporters for that. I guess you've got to do what your executives tell you to do. And even if the reporters were to disobey and report on stuff, it's never going to make it you know, out to air and be broadcast. But I would encourage if uh, anybody wants to actually take a stand, the people that should take a stand is the other people that are up for awards if they have any kind of morals at all. Um, I would say basically just boycott the awards. If they're going to take one whole category out of the uh, awards, what does it mean for you to get an award? If I were like Sanyo or some other technical company or something like that, I would just refuse to accept my CNET award. I would say if it's not open to everybody to participate and somebody's going to be eliminated, then it's not really a, an awards program. So. I would urge all the rest of the people, anybody else up for an award for CNET, just boycott it. Not that I think they will. It's basically, you know, it's uh, good old boys network patting each other on the back. So I doubt that would happen. But that's what I would encourage people to do. You know, stand up for what's true and what's right anyway. But don't expect it to happen. But last of all, um, my buddy Huachuca Rider, he sent me in a What's That Tool segment. I remember we were doing that for a while and then nobody had sent anything in, but I encourage you, uh, there is no, this is not like a thing with a time limit or anything like that. If you have a tool that you think would be interesting for people to, to guess, if it's a little bit out of the ordinary. So what I will do is I'll just put his video up there and play it. He has not even sent me the answer to it yet. And I looked at it and I tell you, I could not even hazard a guess. It looks maybe like something that could use with something to do with fishing possibly but that's just a total wild guess but take a look at his video and see what you uh, possibly think it could be okay this is my mystery tool it's about three feet in length one end, it's just hanging on the hook here, but it's a stainless steel rod. As you see here, this is on one end. And it goes down to the other end. And it has a cable right here, which ends in a, looks like this on the other end, the cable does. And just for scale, pulling up a ordinary standard ballpoint pin. Well, that's it for this week, folks. Take care. I will catch you next week.